I'm Ayana Komatsu, and I'm a 25-year-old shut-in. This is a story of how I was able to recover from being a shut-in and faced my biggest enemy. I am the type that has zero experience working, and since I didn't finish high school, I've been living this life for over seven years now. My parents don't say it to me, but they must be worried about me. Who wouldn't be? Even I want to change my life. But there's one reason why I just can't. My high school didn't have a system of changing classes, so I was stuck with the same people for three years. There was a leader, well, more like a queen in our class. Her name was Ayana Tojo, and her father was a famous CEO of a company well known around my neighborhood. Because of her status and good looks, she was always up in the class tier. I was with her a lot, but we weren't close at all. Go buy me lunch, okay? And for math this afternoon, write my notes as well. Sure. She would use me as a servant. She used me constantly, much like a slave. Honestly, it was irritating, but I was used to it. Up until senior year, right before midterms. I thought we were friends. You're horrible. What? The boy Ayana liked, which I honestly can't even remember who it was, talked to me just a little bit, and she told me I betrayed her. Because of this, all the girls in my class began to ignore me. They didn't physically pick on me or hide or break my things, but this was enough to ruin me. Just before summer break, I couldn't make myself go to school and I dropped out. I don't want to build human relationships anymore, and so I ended up the way I am. I don't even want to remember my past, but there was an event recently that made me remember it. There's an invitation for your high school alumni meetup. Um, thanks. I got an invitation to a meetup, and the date was three months in the future. I didn't want people to see me the way I was right now, so I was going to ignore it. But, long time no see. How have you been? What is it? You got the invitation, right? Yeah. I'm one of the people leaving the event. I wanted to check if you're coming. I don't think I'll be going. Um, why? Well, things... Are you busy from work? N not really, but you don't need to hide it. I know you're a shut-in. You knew? I heard from another meetup. I get it. Coming as a shut-in would be embarrassing, huh? <laughs> you get it then. Well, isn't being a shut-in horrible? Were you like this ever since you graduated high school or after college? No, I dropped out of high school senior year. Oh, really? Don't remember. Yep. So you're a middle school graduate shut-in? Yeah. Your life must suck. Do you want to talk? Anything bad happened to you? Do you not remember? Remember what? N never mind. I'm not going, okay? Ayana forgot about what she did like it never happened and came talking to me like it was okay. It was an event so big it ruined my life, but she doesn't even remember what happened. And this made me cry. But it was because of this conversation that I decided I needed to change my life and I began to put effort into getting back on my feet. But in reality, life wasn't that easy. Because of my education, I couldn't get a single pass from any of the interviews I went to. And just when I was about to lose count, I got an interview at a small IT company as a desk worker. The interviewer was a young man around my age, and... Oh, you have no working experience? Yeah, just when I was about to give up. But you know how to use a computer, right? And you have an accounting certification? I so happen to have certifications for Excel and other work-related skills on my hand. There weren't any other people who looked at those and only checked my educational background. And he said with a smile on his face, You're hired. When can you start working? Huh? He hired me on the spot. The company I began to work at was in a small office space with about seven employees. She'll begin working with us from today. Good to meet you all. It was my first time working ever, and I was so nervous my heart was about to explode. But everyone was super nice and friendly, and they taught me very nicely everything I needed to know. Mitsuaki Urata, the person who interviewed me, was the nicest and looked over me constantly. Let me help you here. Thank you, sir. He would talk to me first when I was in need of help, but was contemplating whether or not to ask someone for help. I thought he was young, but it turns out we're the same age and was the head of this company. To think that we were the same age and this gap between us. Because of Mr. Urata, I was able to start working again. And a month was about to pass after I joined the company. 
Are you getting used to things? If you need any help, let me know via SMS too, okay? Because of you and everyone else, I've gotten used to things pretty quickly. I can't thank you enough. No, no, I just thought you'd be perfect for our team. This is all because you put in the effort. No, not at all, sir. Yes, it is. We were going to have a welcome party for you, but we couldn't because of all the hassle. I'm sorry. It's okay, you don't need to do that for me. I'm totally fine. So, as an apology, I wanted to take you out for dinner after work tomorrow. With you, sir? Of course. If just the two of us is bad, I'll ask the other members to come with us if you want. I'm not forcing anything, though. No, not at all. I, I was just surprised. I think everyone is busy at the moment, so... Then just the two of us it is. It'll be just one or two hours around the office, okay? Are you sure? Of course. It's like a welcome party. Treat yourself to something delicious, okay? If you say so. Thank you, sir. What do you want to eat? Anything is fine. I don't really know a lot of places around here. Right, my bad. I'll find us a great spot then. Thank you, sir. And so, I was going out with Mr. Urata for dinner. I was surprised, and I was so nervous I didn't think much of it at the interview. But he is actually super handsome. He isn't prideful as a CEO, and is very kind and generous to others. Honestly, I was kind of into him. And I know I'm too easy, but I had no experience with men, so when a handsome man like him was kind to me, it was obvious I was going to fall for him. I get Mr. Urata wasn't looking at me as a woman, but dinner, just the two of us, is enough to drive me crazy and nervous. At the actual dinner, I was so nervous I don't remember the taste of the food. We talked about a lot of things, and it was amazing. I almost fell for him again because he was so kind. And I forgot about it, but the day of the alumni meetup was growing near, and I decided to attend the meetup because it was the main reason I was able to go back to living a normal life. The day of the meetup, I tried my best at putting on a nice dress and makeup for the event. And... Hey, Mrs. Komatsu? Wow, you look beautiful! We didn't talk a lot, but do you remember me? I actually thought you were cute back in high school. A lot of boys came and talked to me. I wasn't very used to men at the time, so honestly, I didn't remember them all. But most importantly, I was glad everyone was talking to me. When... Oh, hey, Megumi, you came! Uh, my rival came up to me. You're a shut-in, right? You have quite the guts, huh, to come here today? <laughs> I respect that, she said, so everyone could hear. I'm not a shut-in anymore, and I wanted to talk back, but I remembered what she did to me and couldn't open my mouth. I couldn't stand the stares I got either, and just when I was about to stand up and leave... Mrs. Komatsu is working at my company. She's amazing, and we'll all thank her for her hard work. For some reason, Mr. Urata was here to lend me a helping hand. Nagano? It's been a while. My mother actually got a divorce, so I'm Urata now. I heard his old family name, and my memories flashed before my eyes. The boy Ayana liked in high school was a boy named Nagano, which meant the CEO who helped me out was my classmate. While I was shocked, Ayana was quick to change her attitude. Oh, wow, you looked great back then, but you're much more handsome now. <laughs> I'm flustered. That voice of hers was quite scary for me, but Mr. Urata replied without changing his face. Oh, I heard. Your father's company went bankrupt, right? Is it okay for you to be here? He dropped a bomb, and the entire meetup froze. Wait, I thought she was working in her father's company. Does that mean she isn't working anymore? So that's why she wasn't looking for a husband all this time? Because all eyes were on us, everyone began staring at her now. Her face blushed bright red, and she ran out of the place, never to be seen again. And just then, Mr. Urata began walking out too. He said he had more work to do, so I contacted him a few hours later. I'm sorry for bothering you. Can I speak with you right now? Sure. I'm assuming you have a lot of questions. Yes, I kinda do. Sure. I'll answer all of them for you. Since when did you know I was your classmate? Since the interview. I saw your name and education record too. I actually remembered you from high school. So, you knew about how I dropped out too. Yep, and I sort of knew the reason too. I was always sad about how you were being treated, and upset about myself for not being able to help you. That isn't your fault. I didn't help at all. I might as well be the one doing it. I'm sorry. It's okay, sir. You just saying that is enough. Is the reason you hired me because of that? I can't honestly say no. 
but I do think you are a great asset to our company right now. And not just me, but everyone thinks so. You still gave me a second chance, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you very much. But why did you hide that from me? I thought you didn't want to remember the past. Like today, I wasn't going to attend it, but... Why were you there? I was worried about you, so I went to take a look. And I was going to leave because everything seemed okay, but... And Ayana came to talk to me, huh? I couldn't just stand there, so... I know what I did was childish, but I was very angry at her. Honestly, that made me really happy. So, I was saved by my classmate twice. Because I met him, my life changed drastically. And so, we happened to meet up a couple of times privately as well. And who knew I would marry him a few years down the road. As for Ayana, her father's company really did go bankrupt. And while she did try to get a husband, it hasn't worked out, and she's a shut-in now. My name is Yuki. I'm a working man, age 25. Well, I actually work too hard. The company I joined as a new grad was a very exploitative company, and on the first day they say, you can be promoted even while young, and overtime is measured per minute! And great bosses for support, and everyone gets PTO! But the reality was much different. Hey! Newcomer! What the hell are these papers? Didn't you say they were fine when you checked them, sir? Don't talk back to me! Have it fixed by today! Because you talk back, this, this, and this! Have these done by tomorrow morning! It's already 9 p.m., sir. And? I'll get it done. Oh, and your PTO request is declined. Why? Why would someone who can't do work be able to get a vacation, you idiot? A lot of the bosses here abuse their authority just like this, and so the company has that aura. But my boss, Mr. Tekito, is a lot worse in regards to this aspect, and I was his regular target. I'm home. Welcome home, Yuki. You've been working late again, huh? I have dinner ready for you. Sorry, I don't have the appetite. You don't look so good. You're working too much. It's fine, I just have a lot of work on my hands. I see. Oh, and sorry about your brother's wedding. I won't be able to attend it. What? You said you'd get PTO. And firstly, it's on a Saturday. It shouldn't even be a working day for you. Publicly, they say we have two days off per week. But in reality, Saturday working is so normalized that we need to request to have PTO on Saturdays. Sorry, I just have so much work. I'll just go to sleep today. Yuki, hey, please don't just sit there and say something to him. Who knows what'll happen to him if he continues like that? Hmm. <sighs> Come on! Men have to take things into their own hands sometimes. Where are you going? To the bath. You're taking your phone again? Ugh, put it in the bag, okay? All right. My body was too tired, so I went straight to bed. But I imagined I would be yelled at again by Mr. Tekito tomorrow, so my heart rate spiked and I couldn't fall asleep. I wanted to talk to him at times like these, but just when I thought I couldn't... Hey, Yuki. Sorry it's such a late time. Are you still awake? Kaoru! I was thinking I wanted to talk to you just now. Seriously? Man, I'm so good. <laughs> You're always on time, Kaoru. So, did something happen? His name was Kaoru. I don't know if that's his real name. I met him in an online game right when I started working. Since I didn't have to go anywhere, I started playing video games as a hobby. The first person I started talking to was Kaoru. And while we were both noobs, we cooperated on missions, and we've gotten a lot better recently. And so, we became great friends, and a year into our relationship, we exchanged contact information. And we started talking offline as well. He's apparently an older worker than I am, and he always listens to me complain about overtime work and things in the office. I can't have my family hear things like that, so I'm very grateful for him. However, I sometimes feel bad about having him listen to me all the time. My boss yelled at me again. Oh, the usual guy? I had him check once, and he said yes, but he started to nitpick me, and he gave me more work as well. That would be fine, but he declined my PTO request for my brother's wedding too. That's horrible. You can't tell HR, right? In my company, 
Whatever the boss says is always the truth. And my boss is a relative of the CEO, too. No one can talk back to him. You were so unlucky to have that boss, huh? That'll be impossible for a regular company. This is my first company, so I wouldn't know any other. Is your company a lot better, Kaoru? I wish you'd be my boss. Have you thought about changing jobs? You're still so young. Think of all the possibilities. I don't think there are any companies that hired me. Yuki, that's a bad way of thinking. Huh? You can't limit yourself like that. I guess you're a little down because of your screaming boss, but always have confidence in yourself. Got it? Yeah, thanks. And thanks for always listening to me. I'm sorry about that. Don't sweat it. You have an early day tomorrow, right? Get to sleep. Thanks. Good night. See ya. Have confidence, huh? I'll go to sleep. Because I was able to talk to Kaoru, I was able to go to sleep quickly. But the next day, an incident happened. Ah? What do you mean you can't eat crabs? That day, Mr. Tekito and I went out for dinner with our client. I didn't need to go, but because we could increase our department expenses, I was forced to go. The client was a major client, Moni Ropo Corp. We only had a few sales with them, but Mr. Tekito wanted to increase our sales with them exponentially. And so, Mr. Tekito set up the dinner. But I couldn't eat the main crab course because I was allergic. When I told him that, he got really upset. I'm sorry, but I'm allergic, and I've told you this numerous times before. I don't care! Are you going to ruin this dinner for us? No, no, it's fine. He has an allergy. We can ask the chef to exchange it for something else. Not an issue. See, because of you, the client is being very nice to you. Apologize now! I'm so sorry. Just when I apologized... Your head is too high! Mr. Tekito grabbed my head and shoved it to the ground with his entire body. Not because he threw me to the ground, my nose started to bleed. Ah! Come on! Eat up! While I could only breathe through my nose, Mr. Tekito began to shove crabs into my mouth! I was about to throw up, so I instinctively swallowed it, and my entire body turned bright red and itchy! Mr. Tekito laughed at me, pointing and saying I looked like a crab! The person from Moni Robo Corp stepped in to stop him, but the dinner was awful afterwards. If we lose our sales with Money Robo Corp, it'll be your fault! Why? It's your fault because you had to go and talk about what you can and cannot eat! The clients were really freaked out over Mr. Tekito's behavior, but he himself was blaming me for what had happened! I tried to talk back to him, but he punched me again, and my nose started to bleed again! While I was on the ground, he took 10,000 yen from my wallet, saying it was alimony for the day, and drove off in a taxi! You're late again. Wait, what happened to your face? I tripped. Don't lie to me. Come here. I'm fine. Do you want your mother to worry about it? My father took care of me without a word. Looks like your nose is fine, but what happened? My boss punched me. Punched you? What happened? I told my father what I had went through today. I can't remember the last time I had talked to my father like this, and it was a little embarrassing, but he quietly listened to what I had to say. My friend told me to have confidence in myself, and so I tried talking back to him, but look what happened! Are you angry at your friend? Not at all. Yeah, it hurt. But I'm glad I got to speak up for myself. I see. Are you fine tomorrow? I don't know. Depends on how Money Robocorp reacts. Money Robocorp, huh? They're a pretty big company. Everything would have been fine if Money Robocorp had acted as if nothing had happened. But judging from the reaction earlier, the next day, what I had imagined came true. You little... It's your fault we lost the contract with Money Robo! They called us first thing in the morning, and Mr. Tekito came straight to me. Did they say it was my fault? Of course it's your fault, you good-for-nothing idiot trash! He went to his superior to talk to him. I didn't hear what they were talking about, but he likely talked to his superior about last night in a way that suited him. 
I was called in after he was, and I told him that Mr. Tekito made me eat crabs even though I was allergic. And I was forced to go down on the ground, and that I was punched in the face. But he replied that Mr. Tekito said nothing about those, and he thought that I had made all of that up and wouldn't listen. In the end, I was made the culprit of a major loss for the company, and I was transferred to an idle job position while Mr. Tekito had no penalties. I couldn't care about anything at this point, and I was doing mundane tasks, when suddenly... Tomorrow at 10 a.m., wait outside your company, okay? Kaoru, it's fine. No, it's not. I don't care anymore. I can't do anything! Yes, you can. Tomorrow at 10, alright? Come outside, even if you need to lie to get out. I couldn't understand what he was saying, but the next day, I went down to the entrance of my office just in time. He had supported me for over three years, and that was enough to trust in him for me to check it out. Over here. I looked over to the voice, and right there was the person at the dinner from Moni Robocorp, Mr. Sugo. I heard that you were in a terrible situation because we had cancelled our contracts with your company. I want to go explain for you, so let's go. Um, why are you here? I hate unfairness. Excuse me. In the CEO's office was the CEO, Mr. Tekito, and his superior. Ow! Oh, Mr. Suko from Money Robocorp! Is this about the contract? Yes, but one thing before we talk about the contract. What is it? Mr. Tekito, I declined the contract on the call. Did you tell your CEO and superior about what we talked about? Um, yes, of course. I see. Let me ask the CEO then. What did you hear from him, sir? Um, well, that is... I'm talking to the CEO. <coughs> I heard that the man standing there had messed up at your dinner. And that was why you declined the contract, isn't that correct? Not at all. I told Mr. Tekito this over the call. I can't sign a contract with a company whose people abuse their subordinates and make them eat food they're allergic to. Ryuta! Ah! What is this? Wait, Uncle! This is a- If Mr. Tekito is going to continue as the representative, our company will never sign a contract with you. Ever again. I'm sorry for causing you inconvenience. We will take care of this situation moving forward. The CEO told Mr. Tekito and his superior to stay in the office, and I went to see Mr. Sugo out. Thank you very much! No problem. I'm sorry for not being able to stop the situation back then. But why did a higher-up like you come here today? Huh? Did your father not say something? My father? Actually... I listened to Mr. Sugo and realized everything. I'm home! Welcome home! Hey, Dad. I mean, Kaoru. Uh, it was you, Dad. What are you talking about? Stop playing with me. Mr. Sugo told me that you asked him to help me out for a boss who was abusive. And always targeted me as a scapegoat. Well, I used to work with him, and you know things. Did you not realize? I never told anything besides him hitting me to you. I only told Kaoru. Ah, why didn't you tell me? He blushed and said, Well, I can't ask you in person, so... Was it an accident that we met online? Not really. What Mr. Sugo told me was correct. My father seemed really stubborn, but to know he was really watching over me... You're so stupid, Dad! <laughs> hey, don't call me stupid! I'm fine. Sorry for making you worried. After this incident, I was able to transfer back to my old position. But I didn't want to stay, so I changed companies and quit the job. They told me to stay in order to keep the contract with Money Robo. But when I requested I leave in a month or otherwise, Mr. Tekito's superior stopped trying to keep me here. As for Mr. Tekito, he became the real culprit for losing the Money Robo contract, and for physically abusing his subordinate and abuse of power. The CEO got really upset and fired him from the company. And the higher-ups who were backing up Mr. Tekito got scolded by the CEO as well. And while they weren't fired, 
they faced heavy punishment as well. One month later, I moved to a different company. I had two weeks of breaks in between, and since it was during my brother's wedding, I was able to attend it. As for my new company... Mr. Yuki, we've been waiting for you! Looking forward to working with you! Yes! Thank you very much, sir. After the incident, Mr. Sugo contacted me, and I quickly replied to his request to join his company. Apparently, he was a subordinate to my father in a different company, and they were very close. And he wanted to return the favor somehow. Oh, but I didn't hire you just because of a favor, okay? I need you to work hard, you know. Of course, sir. And apparently for my old company, my quitting created a chain of quitting. And the company went downhill from there. I had three horrible years of working, but my new life seems very exciting and I can't wait to start again. Oh, and of course, I'll be continuing that game I play. Let's go! My name is Mio. After graduating university with a degree in education, I became an elementary school teacher. Today, I'd like to share with you why I wanted to become a teacher in the first place and an unbelievable incident that happened to me after I became a teacher. While I was in elementary school, I was bullied by my homeroom teacher. I was also being bullied by the other kids in my class too. And one day, one of them ripped the pages out of my textbooks. Miu, where's your textbook? It was ripped out. Lying to me again, I see. Lying is gonna get you nowhere in life, you know. She wouldn't believe anything I said. That wasn't all. When I told her about how I was being bullied... Miu, your dishonest accusation to have hurt these poor kids. Apologize to them now. Yeah, she's right. Say you're sorry. But I... haven't done anything wrong. Stop lying to me. Speak up. It's annoying when you mumble like that. Come on now, apologize to these kids. I could have refused and ended up apologizing to my bullies, all of who were grinning at me. You're not meaning it! Ow! Oh, why are they doing this to me? This had gone on for so long that I'd given up all hope that someone would help me. And when my bullies saw how my teacher treated me, they took their bullying to the next level. But my teacher continued to ignore what was going on, and that wasn't all. Whenever a difficult question came out during class, she would point at me to answer it. But when I obviously couldn't... This is why you're a failure! And just like that, I became the laughingstock of my class. This went on for the entire school year, and by the end of it all, I was both emotionally and mentally drained. The teacher that came after her didn't do anything like what she did. I couldn't trust anyone anymore. So I spent the rest of my days in elementary school alone and kept to myself as best as possible. But things would eventually change. It happened when I was in my freshman year of high school. When my new homeroom teacher, Mr. Seagull, noticed that I was spending most of my time alone, he reached out to me. How's school? It's alright. You have any friends? I don't need any. Why? Because I can't trust anyone. Usually when I said something like that, the teacher would start lecturing me about how friends are important or what real friendship was. But Mr. Seagull was different. After thinking for a bit... Do you like talking to people? Not really. Huh, okay. Well, I love talking to others. Okay. So I can spend the rest of recess talking with you? I didn't understand what he was trying to do, so I just gave a vague reply and left. He didn't yell at me or lecture me. But why would he want to talk with me? I really couldn't understand what he was trying to accomplish. But from the following day, Mr. Seagull started talking to me after school. Wow, so you make your own lunch every day. Yeah, my mom is always busy, so... That's really impressive. What's your favorite thing to cook? Teriyaki, I guess. And that sounds so good. We would just sit there and chat idly for a bit every day. 
He never lectured me or anything. It felt good finally having an actual conversation with someone. And I started to open up to him. And after about three months of us talking every day... Mr. Seagull? What's up? I spilled my gut and told him everything about what I had gone through during elementary school. Mr. Seagull never interrupted me and just stood there, listening closely. So... Uh, I'm scared that my friends and even you might eventually leave me. Hmm. Sorry that this all happened to you. So I'm scared of even telling you about this. Then that means I have to be the first person that you were glad to open up to. What? Mr. Seagull smiled and gently rubbed my head. Everything's gonna be alright. I'm going to make sure of that. <laughs> that day, I cried until every single teardrop that I had been holding in for the past couple of years came out. And that day, I also decided on something. Mr. Seagull, when I grow up, I want to be a teacher like you. Mr. Seagull seemed surprised to hear this at first. But he quickly smiled and said, You would make an amazing teacher, Miyu. I'm rooting for you. Thank you. And so, I applied to a university with a major in education. And after graduating, got my teaching license. And now, I'm actually working as a teacher at an elementary school. I found out after I actually started teaching, but looking after a class of elementary school kids is hard work. I had to teach every subject, so getting ready for each class was time-consuming in itself. What's more, with the kids still being in their early tens, they would often fight with one another. For the first few months, I was completely overwhelmed by the amount of work I had to do, but this was what I wanted. I did my best to ensure that each and every student was having a fun time at school. But one day, something unbelievable happened. One day, I was heading to one of my classes right before it began, holding textbooks and other supplies. But I heard my students shouting and yelling inside of the classroom. So I rushed into the door and went inside. Take this! S stop! The class troublemaker, Ryota, was sat on top of and punching one of his classmates. That wasn't all though. The other boys in class were cheering Ryota on, shouting and hollering. What the hell are you guys doing? Hey, I thought someone was supposed to be on watch duty. S sorry I wanted to see what was going on too. You idiot! Ow! Stop it, Ryota. I'm taking you to my office. And not so fast. You guys are coming with me as well. What? I asked them what had happened, and they told me that when Ryota used Makoto's pencil without getting his permission, Makoto complained about it to Ryota directly. This didn't sit well with Ryota who ordered his friends to hold Makoto down on the ground while he punched him. The nurse told me this earlier, but Makoto's eyes are all swollen up because he punched him! And? So you don't think you did anything wrong? Not at all! It was obvious that Ryota was in the wrong, but he didn't show any signs of remorse. He even looked bored. He probably thought that I'd eventually let him go if he pretends to listen to me for long enough. But with Makoto seriously injured, I wasn't gonna let things end there. I've contacted your parents already. But when Ryota heard me say that, he grinned ominously. Alright, there's nothing to worry about then. Huh? Usually, kids are terrified of having their parents cold, but... What is it with Ryota and his positive attitude? But everything started to make sense when she arrived. Takito here. May I come in? And there she was. What? It was my former elementary school homeroom teacher that had bored me all those years ago. Thank you for always looking after my son. Wait, what's wrong, miss? You don't remember me? I'm sorry. Have we met before? 
I recognized her almost instantly. But she seemed to have forgotten all about me. After all that she did, she made my life a living hell. And she doesn't remember me? I started to recount the numerous instances of her bullying. And I was slowly but surely consumed by rage and hate. But that was one. You would make an amazing teacher, Miyu. I remembered when Mr. Sugo had told me and tried to shake my anger away. I had to settle things with Ryota first. After we were joined by the school counselor, the four of us moved to a different room and started talking about what had happened. But the first thing Miss Tekito said was, What are you even teaching my son anyway? My son bullying other kids? Impossible! She insisted that her son was incapable of bullying or doing anything wrong. Miss Mia, was it? This is your first year as a teacher, right? What happened today happened because you weren't watching over kids closely. I admit that I'm new here, and I have a lot to learn. But that doesn't mean Ryota has the right to be violent to other kids when I'm not looking. So now you're blaming my son for your own incompetence. As a teacher myself, you embarrass me. Hearing his mother defend him, Ryota just sat there and smiled. Now I know why Ryota was happy to hear that I called his parents. You know, kids are watching their teachers very closely. Good teachers can make their students behave. But bad teachers like you, their class ends up being unorganized and chaotic. That's how it works. It's all up to the teacher, you know. That was the final straw that broke the camel's back. What you're saying is true. Right? And so if I ignore bullying that's going on in my class, the students will think that sort of behavior is allowed. And they'll escalate things to a whole new level. I know that because that's exactly what you did. What? What are you talking about? You really don't remember me. Fifteen years ago, I was in your class and you let the other kids bully me. When I told her this, Miss Tekito finally recognized me and let out a gasp. You recognize me, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember you at all. But why do you seem shaken up? I'm not. So you really don't remember me, huh? Or about the time when you made me apologize to my bullies? Or when you made me the butt of your jokes? Or when you made me stay after school to clean the room? I don't remember any of it. Fine then. There's countless other incidents of you mistreating me. So the next time you're around, I'll bring my diary that I was writing at the time. A diary? You're still teaching, right? Seeing as you haven't changed one bit, I'm sure there are still kids in your class who are going through what I did. So I'm going to use the evidence that I have of you bullying me and ask the Bureau of Education to look into you. W wait a minute. Uh, but that was years ago. It doesn't matter how long it was memory and pain remains. That goes for Makoto too. Now he's going to be afraid of Ryota. He has to be scared of whether or not he's going to hit him again. Okay, okay, fine. Come on, Ryota. Apologize. What? Why? But he was being annoying. Ryota. Ow! Ow! You hit me! Now I know that you treat your own child like your students too. Uh, I'm sorry, but boys will be boys, right? I'll apologize too, so forgive us. I refuse. Please no, not the Bureau. Please don't tell them about me. I hope you regret the choices that you made for the rest of your life. No! The following day, I brought my diary to the office of the Bureau of Education. But there I met... Mr. Seagull? Long time no see. There, I met Mr. Seagull, my former high school teacher. After you graduated, I started working here to make all schools a better place for everyone. So, now I'm here at the Bureau of Education. So, what can I help you with today? I was afraid that they might turn me down, but as soon as I saw Mr. Seagull, I knew that everything was going to work out just fine. After hearing my side of the story, Mr. Seagull immediately asked his co-worker to start looking into Miss Tekito. Their findings didn't surprise me. Bullying 
was rampant in Ms. Tekito's class, and it was all directed at this one student. And it also became apparent that Ms. Tekido had been mistreating her students for years. She fired quickly from her workplace, and now... She won't be able to work as a teacher ever again. Also, after her husband found out about how she'd been treating her students, he immediately filed for a divorce. Apparently, he didn't want to continue a relationship with someone who would do such a thing. By the way, Ryota got a hell of a scolding from his father, and ended up apologizing to Makoto while crying his eyes out. To make Ryota forget about everything his mother had taught him, his father decided to move out and start fresh in a new city. In this world, there are good teachers who use their power to point their students into the right direction, and bad teachers who abuse and take advantage of their authority. I still have a lot to learn. But I eventually want to become a teacher that can protect all of her students. Doc! The samples Miu sent us have arrived! I knew it! The DQN virus is in this as well! Who would do such a thing? I don't know, but whoever it is, they're doing it to hurt people. So, I guess we gotta start making the vaccine now. Ricky, who do you think I am? The vaccine had already been made. What? But if we don't find out who's behind all this, we won't be able to solve the problem. I'm gonna tell my fellow Mino Robos to keep on looking into it. That'd be great, but who the hell would want to make all humans evil? We are the conquerors of worlds. By spreading this DQ and virus to different planets, your organisms will start to fight one another and eventually die out. That's how we conquered numerous worlds. But why? Why is this stupid planet called Earth so hard to take over? Whoa, that was my favorite coffee mug. It's been a year since we started spreading the DQN virus on Earth. Why won't they start fighting? Come on, hurry up and go extinct. Stop throwing stuff. My hair is getting all messed up. This is serious, you know. You lead us, narcissistic OCD piece of crap. You take this seriously, you short-tempered, metal-headed, lazy hag. What did you say to me? Silence! King DQN. DQN! Look at this mess. I gave you a year. But you haven't been able to show any progress. I'm so sorry. sorry. But we already have an idea of what's getting in our way. Hmm. So you're telling me that there's a species on this planet that go toe to toe with us? Who are they? We don't know anything yet. So I told him not to tell him yet. Well, we don't know what they look like yet. Silence! Yes, sir! If they're going to get in my way of conquest, I will show them no mercy! Kill anyone who gets in our way! You wish. That's all for me. Best of luck. Uh -huh. Ugh. Now we have to find the damn scientists! Thanks a lot! You're not gonna help me find them anyway, so what are you complaining about? I'm gonna find the next target. They've gotten a hold of the virus somehow. That means they had to have to come into contact with someone infected with it. Hello, I'm Yuki. Oh, this? I was in an accident when I was in third grade. Me and my brother Ryuji were walking home from the park. Ryuji, look out! I survived, but I lost sight in my right eye from this accident. When my parents saw what happened to my eye... Oh no, how horrible! <laughs> Put on an eye patch, alright? My parents were so nice to me before, but they changed after this accident. My parents are both doctors, and us brothers were raised to be their successors. But they said that no patient would want a doctor with an eye patch and treated me like garbage. My brother was thankful for saving his life at first. However, 
Your brother's life is over. You don't need to worry about him. I'm so glad you were the one that survived. My brother was mind-controlled into thinking like my parents and treated me like trash as well. And so, I ate different things from them, and they didn't even go with me to the hospital. I would do housework because my parents were busy, and my little brother treated me like a punching bag. All the alimony that was paid for my accident was used for my brother's education fees. And I didn't receive anything, and I had to use pencils I found elsewhere. The worst thing I remember was them leaving me for a family trip, and I was left alone at home, all by myself. However, I still had a place to sleep and eat, so I tried my best to endure. But everything changed when I graduated middle school. What are you doing?! I was brought to a driving trip to the mountains for my graduation, when suddenly I was pushed out of the car! You are done with compulsory education, so go ahead and live on your own, okay? They're looking to hire young people around here! My father gave me a pamphlet through the window and tried to drive off. Wait! Are you just going to leave me here?! See you later! I heard there are bears around here! Good luck, loser! The car drove off and left me stranded. It was in the middle of November. I had no jacket on, and it was freezing. I didn't have a smartphone, so I had no way to communicate with people. I endured the cold, held the pamphlet in my hand, and walked straight on the big road. I'm going to get stranded. It's getting colder. What should I do? It may have been at least an hour. My surroundings got very dark, and I didn't know which way I needed to go. I was about to give up. But I knew that if I stopped, I would die. So I kept moving straight forward. Ah! I barely dodged a car in front of me, and a middle-aged man came out of the car. I thought it was an animal, but a person? What are you doing here? It's a person, not a bear. I'm so happy. And what are you wearing? Are you trying to die? No, no. Actually, my parents left me here. What? Mr. Takafumi put me in his car and took me to his house. Man, you have horrible parents. To think a parent would throw their child away just because he can't see. There are parents in this world who can't have kids, even if they want, you know. Mr. Takafumi was angry all the way to his home. It took about 20 minutes to get to his house, and it was a little neighborhood. I'm home! Welcome home! Oh, wait! Who is that? I almost ran this kid over. What does that mean? I'll explain to you later. Could you get some food ready for us? I explained to Miss Sanae about what happened as well. Oh, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? No, it's just that's so horrible. You wait there and relax, okay? And so, Mrs. Sanae cooked up so much food, it barely fit the table. Alright, eat up, there's plenty more. Um, are you really sure? Kids don't need to worry. My wife here is a little stubborn, but her food is top-notch. Well, look who's talking. Who was the one who proposed to me countless times? Stop it. Don't bring things up from the past. <laughs> Thank you for the food. It's so good. <laughs> really? This and this and this. Warm, comforting food. All for me. My stomach and heart were full. Thank you very much. Eat as much as you want, okay? Yes, sir. After the meal, I showed them the pamphlet my father gave to me. This is a pamphlet for the place I work at. My father told me to work here. What do you want to do, though? Honestly, I didn't have a place back home, so I decided right then and there. Mr. Takafumi, you have a farm here, right? Will I be of any service to you if I work at your place? Of course that will. There are only elders around here. All the farms are beat and run down. It would be great help if a young man like you could help out. Then, as I am in debt to you for saving my life, please, let me give back to you. They said to not worry about such a thing, but my decision was made. And so I went to the town hall the next day to apply for the job. In the morning, I looked around the town and noticed there were several empty houses around. There were a lot of elders, and the farms were all run down and unattended due to the lack of working-aged people. Mr. Takafumi came along with me to the town hall, and because he explained the situation to them, they let me start working there. Normally they let people like me working for the town hall live in one of the empty houses, but Mr. Takafumi told me I could stay in his house. But wouldn't I bother you? I asked him. But he answered, while looking up into the sky, You see, I used to have a son too. Huh? Um, where is he now? Mr. Takafumi pointed to the sky. I lost him in a car accident. He's watching us from up there. According to Mr. Takafumi, the accident was about 10 years ago. His son was about my age as well. He was hit by a truck that ignored the lights on his way home. He was sent to the hospital, but didn't survive the crash. You know, my wife is overly excited to have you here too. So you could hang out with us a little longer. <laughs> if I may, yes! 
Of course! It sucks you lost one of your eyes, but I'm glad you made it out alive. I started to cry while shaking his hands, hardened from all the farm work. The feeling of being loved by someone was a first for me. And so, I began learning my way around the farm from Mr. Takafumi and the other elders. I didn't have a lot of physical strength at first, so I was always exhausted. But Mrs. Sanae's food that I had after work was amazing! At first there were people who thought I would quickly give up and run away because I was young. But a year passed, and everyone saw how much hard work I put in. And so, they began to give me a lot of food for me to eat, as well as ask me for my assistance. So I was going around all the farms throughout the day to do work. But I had one worry, the farm I was regularly working on was turning out great. However, the rest were all beaten down and unattended to. And the farms were too big for just me to handle on my own. I wonder if there are other young people with a lot of manpower. Ha! Ah! A group of young motor gangsters drove by! Well, I wouldn't say gangsters. They were just young high schoolers around the area who drove on their motorbikes at night. Hey! Don't throw away things around here! Huh? This is a farm where elders do a lot of work, okay? I know, and I don't care. Then why don't you do this? Why do you care, huh? Because I work here as well. Kyohei, isn't this the dude that came from the city to help out the elders? Ah, oh, so you're the guy! It's because of you I get scolded a lot at home! Screw farm work! Don't mess with farm work! At that moment, I came up with an idea. But right then, I got punched and our encounter ended. But the next day, I went to where they were hanging out with something in my hand. You again? Here, eat this. Who'd eat that? That's gross. I didn't budge at all and continued to make contact with them. Ugh, oh, there he is again. Get lost! I'm not going to quit until you eat this! Then, Kyohei unsettlingly obliged. Ugh, that's gross! What kind of things are you making? This was from a regular supermarket. It's completely different from the ones you're used to eating, right? The ones you usually eat are super fresh, straight from your farms. You know the difference, naturally. This is actually horrible. Do people in the city eat this all the time? Yeah, and you should get how your parents and grandparents are making such amazing produce just by this. So you want us to apologize for throwing things away? I was waiting for that. How about you work with me on the farm? What? what? I want to take care of everyone's farms, but I can't do it on my own. I need you guys' help. But everyone here hates us, you know! That's okay. I asked around. They say you're a little annoying, but they're always watching over you guys. That's embarrassing! Stop asking around! Kyohei started to think a little, and replied in a small voice. Do you think I could do it? Of course you can! Even I could do it! <laughs> you're right. I didn't have anything better to do. I'll help you out then. And so, I got Kyohei and four others of his gang members to help out with the farms. Good morning! Everyone was shocked to see me bring the gang members, but they were so excited to have young people join in on the farm, and they quickly began to teach everyone about the ways of the farm. We would all gather at the town hall after work every day and eat the produce we made, and share information around the table. Kyohei and the rest quit smoking because they needed the lungs for work, and started to use their bikes to carry farm equipment from farm to farm. And so, we began our journey to fix all the farms around the town. Of course, it all didn't go as planned. Because of global warming, even the most experienced farmers had to quit farming, and we had countless pest problems year-round. The worst problems we had were gang problems. But what I did was use the ultimate weapon of peace. Their grandmas! Kind, rural grandmas would step into their arguments, and things would always work out! <laughs> and so, this lasted two years, and all the farms were rebuilt and back to great conditions. And Kyohei began saying something. I want to expand our town more. He told me that all the young people usually leave the town when they turn 18, mainly because there were no jobs in this town. I think if we could make money instead of just sustaining our town, more people would come here. From the city as well. I'm too stupid to know how to do this. I was born and raised here, and I don't want this town to die out. Yuki, do you have any ideas? Everyone, including Kyohei, looked dead serious about this. I was thinking the same thing. So we started a new project. We began to harvest new produce that was unique to this town, and fit the soil. We thought that if we were able to sell unique produce to the city market, even if it was in small quantities, we would be able to create a new source of income, but I didn't think this would be enough. So I gathered the townsfolk and pitched an idea for a town-wide amusement park. I heard that camping trips were becoming a popular getaway event, so I thought this town would benefit from this type of attraction. Our idea was that people could cook using the produce we made and the eggs our chickens lay, let them stay in traditional houses, and fish in the nearby rivers, much like how our elders used to live. With this idea, 
we could make a new source of income as well as explain to people how great this town was. In about six months, we made our first homepage. At first, it was just families from neighboring towns who came. But when word spread, we were even broadcast on worldwide news. And our homepage even crashed because of all the traffic. All right, everyone. We're expecting things to get very busy from tomorrow. But let's keep calm and do our best. Let me know if you need anything. Yes, yes boss. boss. I said, don't call me boss. <laughs> well, you're our CEO, you know. Yep. We decided to make a company when pitching this idea. And everyone all decided that I would be fit for CEO. Honestly, I was super embarrassed. But because of this project, people came from the city to work, and families came to raise their children, and we had more young people in town. After doing research, we were able to create unique produce as well. And we had TV crews come and talk about it. And so, over several years, I was able to bring excitement to this town. But suddenly, I received a call from Kyohei. There was an ex-medical student in town, and the ex-gang members were throwing hands, so they needed my assistance. I rushed over, and there I saw... Hey! I didn't think you were alive! Ryuji! Hey! Can't you read the sign? You can't throw away things here! Hey, I'm your brother! Give me a break! You left me to die! I don't see you as a brother anymore! Wait, he's your brother, Yuki? Yeah, sorry guys. My brother is making a fuss. What are you doing here, Ryuji? You're the CEO here, right? If you have money, pay up to your family, alright? I'm in a private med school. I need the money. You're asking for money from me? Yup. Why would I come to this rural place with nothing in it? And he began to stomp on our produce. <coughs> God damn it! But just then, Mr. Takafumi came from behind Ryuji and scolded him. What are your feet doing on our produce? Get that thing away from it! His face was blood red and his veins were popping out. You could just buy these at the supermarket. Stop it already! Shut up, old man! Don't talk back to a future doctor! Ah! Mr. Takafumi! Mr. Takafumi was pushed down by Ryuji, and he held his heart on the ground. Hey, hey, I just pushed him a little. Mr. Takafumi! He isn't breathing. You're studying to be a doctor, right? What should we do? I don't know. I don't care. That kid ran away! Kyohei, we put an AED around Town Hall, right? Bring it here, now! I gave Mr. Takafumi chest compressions while Kyohei brought the AED, and once he did, I attached it to Mr. Takafumi and pressed the button. <coughs> Mr. Takafumi! He began to breathe again, and he was brought to the hospital on the ambulance someone had called for. He had a cardiac arrest, and if we had done nothing, he would have died on the spot. Thank you, Yuki. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mrs. Sanae was crying at the hospital. Thank God Mr. Takafumi survived. However, I couldn't stand the person who had the knowledge to save him but ran away. Ryuji. What is this? Take this back! My parents came to my office once they saw the report on the weekly magazine. The incident was broadcast on the news with the headline, A soon-to-be doctor runs away from an elder's heart he had stopped, and was quite the news. I couldn't stand Ryuji, so I told all the news reporters everything that happened. It's true, though. I get picked on at school for this, you know! Even my patients are leaving because they don't want to be seen by Ryuji! This is what you do to your parents who raised you?! Raised me? Parents? What are you saying? I glared at the three of them. My parents are Mr. Takafumi and Mrs. Sanae. You guys threw me away when I was 15 years old! I only see you as criminals who almost let their son die! I never saw you as family, so I'm going to request alimony for this. Then why don't you work here as well? They'll be your co-workers. Guys, come in. And the door to my office opened, and... Sup, guys! guys. <gasps> So you guys are the ones who threw our CEO in the woods, huh? There are a lot of hills and rivers around this place. If you're going to come here again, you may just slip and fall, or even drown by accident. Who knows, right? HELP! Be careful walking on your own, alright? Thanks, Kyohei. Being an ex-gang member sure helps, huh? <laughs> I actually thought they would come to me, so I asked Kyohei and the gang to dress up like they used to and wait for my signal. I heard after this, my brother graduated from school, but during his assistant years in a hospital, he was arrested for trying to assault a patient using his status. And as a chain reaction, patients from my parents' hospital left as well. They couldn't pay off their loans, ended up in a lot of debt, and went bankrupt. As for me, I met a beautiful lady in this town, and we're just about to get married. My true parents are so grateful for us as well, and I'm glad I'm living my life right now. 
Mr. Takafumi's already excited about a grandson. <laughs> I had a lot of bad things happen to me, but now I'm truly happy to be in this town. I hope to stay here with my friends and real family moving forward. <laughs>